After a long winter in the lower 48, for a brief moment, after the rivers swell from the spring melt, kayakers look for the right window to attempt unique and iconic sections of river. For Trent McCreary and Knox Hammond, who have set out on a journey to paddle some of the west's and northwest's most challenging white water, chasing these short windows of good water flow are what each season is all about. Knox and I, uh, we met out of high school. We have very different personalities. He kept to himself, and at the time I was kind of obnoxious and a little bit annoying, so we didn't get along at all, but I had a lot of similar goals for kayaking and became good friends through that, loved kayaking and trying to push it. This adventure for Trent McCreary, Knox Hammond, and the rest of the team will begin in Montana's Crazy Mountains, setting out first to paddle Montana's Big Timber Creek hoping the water will be low enough to run the notorious Big Timber Falls that rarely gets paddled because of its severe consequence in the limited window of good water flow. From there, the team will make the long drive to California's Tahoe National Forest in an effort to catch the right river levels that will allow them to paddle the Royal Gorge and the almost 70-foot Wabina Falls a run that will be a pinnacle achievement for the whole team season. We talked about what we wanted to accomplish with the trip, what our hopes were, because we knew we wouldn't be able to do everything we wanted. So. You know, just kind of playing things by ear, definitely that's the operation, that's the lifestyle. So that's what we're doing. I've never boated in Montana before, so the only boating I've really dreamed of doing in Montana was Big Timber Creek. I've been wanting to do that for, I think, six years. <laughs> the first steps of their journey take the team into the rainy temperate forests of Montana's Crazy Mountains. Joined by cinematographers and aggressive boaters in their own rights, Eric Parker, Olin Wimberg, and Brendan Wells, who, intent on capturing the adventure on film, must paddle much of the whitewater the team will see on their trip. Big Timber Falls is really cool because it's pretty much the first thing you see when you're hiking up uh, along the creek. It's definitely the, the crux of the, the run if you do end up running it. like 10 years ago, almost the date actually. Now, 10 years later, it still looks pretty scary. I've never woken up to snow in June before. The river was super high, now the snow made it cold, so it dropped down to a good level for us. So, it's all working out, we're super fired up. Feeling they have come at the right time, the team dons their gear and makes the hike up to the top of Big Timber Creek. It just seemed like stars were lining up and it was perfect. Sun just popped out. Couldn't be lining up better for us right now. maybe like half an hour into actually being on the river. By the time we got to the first big slide called the Pinch, it had started snowing again. And by the time we all ran down, it was like super cold. We got to the bottom, my hands were just frozen and we still had the entire rest of the run to go. Woo! It's about some of the coldest kayaking I've ever done in my life. 
we all just kind of looked at each other and we were all just like shivering and we we're all like kind of like yo you, you guys want to like, get out of here that was pretty devastating to think that we had everything lined up and to get still shut down after that but it's exactly what we deserve for calling it so early defeated by snow cold and hubris having praised the sun and good weather the team will flee the frigid temperatures with hopes of returning tomorrow to better luck and warmer temperatures yeah, it finally gets around big t falls yeah dude how do you think it's gonna look today it's gonna look perfect yeah, it's pretty crazy driving up here. You just uh, get to drive by all of these horses and all of this farmland, massive meadows, and then you just see these mountains just looming in the background, the crazies, and Big T is just nestled right in there. We're back at the top of Big Timber. We got a bunch of six slides, some awesome white water. We're gonna enjoy it. First rapid looks really fun. A lot of cool moves in there. Yeah, back at Big T above the pinch. See how it goes. Top section of Big Timber Creek definitely gets your heart going. The very first drop is called the pinch, where you basically just have like this big ramp and it all just funnels down into about a two foot wide slot. Oh, this is way more fun when there's some sun outside. There's another bigger rapid called the Gambler. It's definitely one of the more unique drops on Big Timber. The gambler can kind of dish out some carnage, but luckily we were able to get through that one well, and then by that point we're getting pretty close to the, the crux of the entire run called uh, Big Timber Falls. Dude, it's so much lower than that first day we were here. At the top of the most consequential rapid of Big Timber Creek, the team takes one last look and decides that Eric, Olin, and Brendan will sit this one out and get the shots while Knox and Trent take on this daunting line. It's definitely the crux of the run if you do end up running it. A lot of people do choose to portage it because it's not clean. There's all these flakes and chunks that are trying to flip you and make you go places that you don't want to go. For kayakers of Trent's and Knox's level, manageable is a term that leaves a lot of questions and concerns as to the likely outcome, but not to the likelihood Rock, of an attempt. Scissors, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right. After deciding in the most scientific fashion as to who will get to go first, Trent will step back and watch his friend Knox's line while the rest of the team positions themselves for the shot and for safety to respond should Knox make a mistake on the extremely technical and treacherous rap. Waiting to run this thing for since I was 12 years old maybe. Be nervous, but yeah, I'm stoked to see how this goes. I'm real excited, it's gonna be fun.
having seen Knox run the rapid that has worried them since they first arrived here in Big Timber. Trent knows he'll need to be more than just on his game to make it down safely at all, let alone as smoothly as Knox. doing a lot of these like paddling. this guy this guy he, he does a Washington tuck to make it look cool you like skip out and then I'm just like falling down but that's all right you know that's why you guys are out here make it look good day after day Trent Knox and the team wake up along the river a life that after years of kayaking, they are comfortably accustomed to. This morning, they will wake up in central Idaho, ready for a 50-mile big water run down the south fork of the iconic Salmon River. Uh, uh, oh, I was just having such a good dream. <laughs> I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> no, you're down. I'm down. Up. The fast moving big water of the sand will be starkly different from the shallow, rocky creaking the team experienced in Big Timber. The pushy waves and big holes creating an almost endless roller coaster of water for the team to enjoy. the South Fork, confluence of the main salmon, and then long day of flat water, but I'm really stoked. Yeah. <laughs> Ecstatic after their high energy ride down the big water of the Salmon River's iconic South Fork, the team sets out for California in their biggest goal of their season, the treacherous Royal Gorge and its centerpiece, the massive, almost 70-foot Wabina Falls. We realized that our biggest kind of objective, the Royal Gorge, was dropping into a good flow. So we realized we just had to drop everything and drive straight to Truckee. So we just rolled up here, the North Fork of the American, infamous Royal Gorge. Um, quite possibly the best river in California. Basically the main features on the river are five big waterfalls ranging anywhere from 40 to about 80 feet tall. The Royal Gorge will be the most challenging and dangerous section of river that Knox, Trent, and the team will run. With high walls, few to no exits, and huge technical drops. The Royal Gorge presents unique challenges for scouting, safety, and, should it be necessary, rescue. For their two days on this river, the team will be keenly aware of their surroundings as they make their decisions on how and what to run on the way down. You could go in and you could portage every single drop, but at the end of the day, like if you're there to run them, you just have to really be confident in what you're doing and not letting yourself mess up which is like you know something to say but it it does happen
hiking lives in a medium of constantly changing extremes, from changing river flows to new and evolving obstructions created by rocks and fallen trees. Trent, Knox, and the whole team are well aware of how any small mistake can have big consequences. The team is settling into a rhythm when cinematographer Olin Winberg gets off his line and suffers, among other injuries, a bad shoulder dislocation. Feel your shoulder pop? Yeah. I got the bird. You can help walk it out. Pull on your... I can't. I use my arm at all. Okay. I got you. How's that feel? I'm going to push your hand backwards like Incapable of putting Olin's shoulder back into place, the team moves him higher up in the canyon, able only to get him on a shelf, just above the thrashing white water below. With no other options, they call for help and do what they can to make their friend comfortable while they prepare for the search and rescue team to arrive and pull Olin from the canyon via a long line under the helicopter. But with every passing moment, the darkness makes a rescue tonight less and less likely. Maybe like 7.45 or 8 o'clock, uh, Olin his shoulder got blown out on this little crack drop and it just hasn't gone back in. So Brandon Munt's calling a helicopter. Hopefully we get this all settled up soon. By the time the rescue team arrives, it's too dark, forcing Olin, Knox, Trent, and the rest of the team to hunker down in the canyon and wait for morning. When the sun rises, search and rescue are on the way, and no one could be happier than Olin to be on his way out of the gorge. And while they have decided to carry on through the rest of the Whitewater, the thoughts of the consequences that were present at the start are now in the forefront of everyone's minds, a heavy weight as they continue down the treacherous river. Like it definitely changed my mentality, just having an evacuation that day and knowing that you have to run three more massive waterfalls after that. We came across Rattlesnake Falls. It's a beautiful cascading 50-foot waterfall. It's about as good as it gets for a waterfall. this big horizon. It's the biggest horizon on the entire run and it's called Lavina Falls. At almost 70 feet, Wabina Falls, with a large recirculating rapid leading into the pool above and rough, pushy slide that leads to the sheer part of the waterfall, has many added dangers for Knox and Trent to consider. Running even clean waterfalls of this size is a dangerous pursuit, unique in itself. 
knocks me, went down, scouted the lip, and it's like really sketchy. It's all like this loose shale just to like walk down like to the lip and see what it looks like. Walked back up to Trent and I told him I wanted to do it and I thought we could do it safe and he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Did not expect it to look good, but it looked uh, feasible for us to run it and get down safely without injury. So we uh, both decided to fire it up. People look at running waterfalls and kayaks as like really reckless and this thing that doesn't require skill. It's like the complete opposite, like it's really the most technical thing that you can do because you have to do the smallest adjustments over the smallest period of time with the biggest reactions possible. Having run Big Timber Creek and Royal Gorge was for Trent and Knox the trip of a lifetime and making it through the massive Wabina Falls and the rocky and technical Big Timber Falls will be something they talk about for seasons to come. The lifestyle of living on the road and chasing whitewater around the country has led to pinnacle experiences and life-altering runs down some of the country's most challenging rivers. For Knox, Trent, and the whole team, these journeys are what makes life itself worth living. And once they find their way home, wash off the dirt and let the memory sink in. Life will have them on the road once more, looking for the next adventure.